Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Eleni if you are new here. Hello, I hope you'll stick around for more crochet content. Today I'm coming at you with another chit chat crochet with me. I love doing these. I love talking. I love sort of getting some work done. Not a lot gets done, but that's okay. It's, you know, it's not for that really. Not really. Um, so today I'm working on a couple things. I've got a new pa pattern project I want to show you that I just started making and I really like, so I want to share it and um, show you a couple of new things I bought recently. So let's get into it, starting with what I've made recently. All right, this sweet thing is called the cute loaf cat by handmade by Annie it's so cute um, if you don't follow me on Instagram you wouldn't know but I did a little one of those like trade offer videos and said you tell me your favorite colors and I will crochet a plushie in those favorite colors this was somebody's suggestion of yellow and pink, and I love how it I love how it turned out. I've been calling this the pink lemonade cat. I think it's so cute. This is my first time doing the eyes like this, but I really like the face. I think it's sweet. I think it's very soft and cozy instead of having the safety eyes. So I think I'm gonna kind of go back and forth between this kind of face and the other face that I did. Um, I don't have the other cat right now to show you. It is packed away with my market items, um, which are not here right now. They're at my mom's house. So I will link this pattern down below, but that's what it looks like. Adorable. Really, really cute. Um, and what else have I been making? I think I talked last time about um, the cat toys. I'm still making a ton of those. Those have been pretty popular. I'm really happy about it. I don't remember if I've said my pricing before on those, but I do one for $4 or three for $10. Um, and people tend to just buy three of them. They're a pretty small item. I'm intending to do gift sets as we get closer to the holiday season. I got some adorable cotton yarn that's like kind of Christmassy colors with like a red white and green um, and I just figured you know that it could be those I'm looking into gift boxes um, or gift tins for to add to that um, the price that the t if it was a tin the price would need to go up a little bit maybe I mean I would imagine because I wouldn't be buying so many in bulk but I need I need to look into it a little bit more so let me not get ahead of myself but um, people love cat gifts people love pet gifts so I've also had somebody buy three for their baby because their baby likes the sound and I was like oh that's cute that's different I'm not that I wouldn't recommend it it is you know it's cotton yarn it's fine but it can, if they put a lot of pressure on it, it's just, you know, it's got that plastic cat toy inside, so it can break, technically. Um, yes, so that is one thing I've been working on. Um, one thing I did do recently is went to a Joann's that is closing. It's in Peekskill, New York. I mean, they're very closed by now. This was when they still had six days left, and by the time you see this video it will have been a month past um, but I got a bunch of cotton yarn for the cat toys from there let me just do a little haul why not let me show you that stuff and then I'll talk about a couple new things that I got at Joann's that was my first time ever using those products um, not a Joann's that was closing these other items are from my typical Joann's that I go to and then we'll get into the crochet I promise we'll get there all right, so my partner slash fiance's brother told me that this Joann's was going out of stock, out of, sorry, going, 
out of business. <laughs> oh, where it's going out of business. His friend had gone and gotten some stuff and I didn't really get a chance to look into it but then I got like a pushed marketing thing for it. So I ended up going. Here is the length of my receipt. Um, they have pretty good prices. I mean all things like anything yarn related that's a great deal. Um, I also got two of the 10 pound boxes of polyfill. Those are usually $60. I got them for $24 a piece. So instead of spending $120 on polyfill, I spent $48. So that was actually really good because I was completely out of polyfill and I was going to need a 10 pound box anyway. So I bought the last two that they had in the store. That was, I would have been happy to leave it there, but I ended up walking around and getting more stuff. So I think these are the first thing. I got, I love scrapbooking and um, I have to, I have a scrapbook that's for Greece from our trip last year, but I already ran out of pages in it. It only came with like, I don't know, 10 pages, so like 20 if you do back to back. Um, and I'm out and I'm, I literally had only just gotten through the first week of the trip, of the three week trip. So I got refills for that. These came out to $4.60 a piece. They're usually $11.50, so that was pretty good. And there, um, there's 25 additional pieces in each one of these. So that will last me a good long time. I'll be able to fill up this scrapbook and the rest of the ones that I've got. I got um, some more extra needles for my sewing machine. I somehow break my needles like pretty consistently. So I always need extras on hand. These are usually $5.99. They came out to $2.40. I got this jar of pins. I personally don't own a pin cushion. I don't know how I've done that. But I liked that this had pins and a pin cushion on top. So I figured I'd get it for my sewing station. This was usually $13.99. It came out to $5.60. And I got a couple of things for the Cricut. I got two infusible inks this green green watercolor um was 7.99 came out to three dollars 20 cents and the same for this gray um these are both the infusible ink i really like the infusible ink i've had my cricut for all of like three months now but the infusible ink is so cool like it just is awesome and Clothing is what I'm doing a lot of anyway, so I've been really utilizing those. So I was happy to grab those. Then I got, is it these? Yeah. Two of these reclosable little teeny bags. Um, what was I thinking of using these for? either for my bracelets or pendants when they sell um just for packaging for my um shop and for my craft fairs i thought they would be good for that so these came out uh, were usually 219 they came out to 88 cents a piece and there's 100 bags in each one then i think this is the last non yarn item yeah this was the um a clover crochet hook in the six millimeter originally was 9.99 and it came out to four dollars even so they didn't have a lot of crochet hooks left oh, they had a lot of the teeny tiny ones um I just didn't feel the need to get those but I have a few clover hooks just kind of as backup hooks they're not my go-to but really what I was thinking was I'm trying to have a good um, variety in my classroom 
because I only ask the students to start the year with one crochet hook and one size. Um, but typically what happens is they start experimenting with other types of yarn or they'll bring in a new skein of yarn once they finish their first one and it's a different weight and then they need to go up or down a hook size depending on their project. So I'm trying to kind of build up the variety of hooks that I have available in the classroom um, as so that as they gain more experience, they don't have to go out and buy a new crochet hook. They can just borrow one from the classroom and give it back when they're done with the project and things like that. So this is really going to be a classroom hook probably, um, uh, just as an, an, another size option. All right, on to the yarn. Um, looking through this. It's all sugar and cream, but some of it's like lily sugar and cream. I'm not really sure what the difference is, but there is a slight pricing difference. So the rest of this bag is full of yarn. Let's see if we can get a good view of it. Oh yeah. And I am so happy that I got this because the cat toys really have been popping off. And so I'm trying to always have in stock for craft fairs like 30 to 50. And I haven't even posted them on my Etsy yet. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to do it if I want to have people be able to choose a set of three of any color or if I'm going to pre-plan three packs and have that be available so I'm still figuring that out um all right let's just get into the yarn here I've got four of these let's see these are the lily sugar and cream super sized so they are in the color mistletoe they were originally 449 and that made each one one dollar eighty cents a piece so if they're 449 they became a dollar eighty cents and some things in here were originally 347 they became a dollar thirty nine. So I again don't really know what made what what price, but that's that. Um, I did get two of these, but I have one in another another bag right now. But this is Lily Sugar and Cream Super Size. Color is Moon Dance. That one I love a lot. It's like all my favorite colors. This was one off. It's the Lily and Sugar and Cream, Lily Sugar and Cream Super Sized in Overcast Twist. Thought that was interesting, cute. Then I think this was also a one off, Lily Sugar and Cream Super Size in Psychedelic. This one's kind of yarn vomiting. Uh, is it a one-off? Yeah. This is the Lily Sugar and Cream Super Size in Renegade. Got three of these Lily Sugar and Cream Super Size in Summerfield. These were $3.47. I'm not sure why. So they became a dollar thirty-nine a piece. That one's also like a good one for Christmassy. It's a little um, more muted, toned down than the mistletoe one. All right, I got a good amount of these. What, five? Did I get five? Oh, here's another mistletoe. So I actually got five mistletoe. 
and I actually got six of these. I cannot hold them all. This is in Sunkissed. Nice blue and yellow and white. Uh, one of these Crown Jewels Ombre. That one's a really pretty color. Can you tell I love the purples and the blues? Another one-off Country Stripes. That one I feel like is going to get tie-dye vibes, so that'll be nice. One off in Emerald Energy Ombre. I like the greeny blues. Um, this one is just black. Honestly, I probably won't make just black cat toys. I think that would be... They're like pretty small so like if it goes under the couch you're never gonna see it so I don't want to do just black but having black cotton never hurts so I figured I'd get it and it was the only one I did buy out the rest of the cotton like I said they had six days left so I just did it um, and then this is the last one this is in creamsicle it's a fun one so that was my Joanne closing sale haul. Um, then I went to my regular Joanne's and why was I there? Honestly, I just wanted to pop in just see what they had. Oh, you know why I was there? Because I needed to get yellow. I didn't have like, I've got like a gold yellow that I use for the bees, but I wanted like something a little brighter like this. So I got that. I actually got the pink there that day too because um, of that person wanting pink and yellow together. And while I was there, they had the baby blanket sparkle in this um, color called tomato sparkle. They had this on clearance for $6.97. I don't know if it'll pick up the sparkle aspect of it. Maybe a little bit there. Um, I... Uh, never worked with sparkle before this project which I got the pink yarn the same day so I was intrigued by that they only had two skeins on sale of it so I just grabbed it it's a nice bright orange um, I was thinking for seahorses it would be fun for like the comb of the seahorse if it's a little sparkly um, I was thinking I would do some smaller stingrays in it maybe mix it into some tentacles some jellyfish just for like a pop something different um, and I really love how it looks on this cat with this um, yellow so I might end up making an orange and yellow version of that pink lemonade cat um, I also got this purple yarn. I got the big twist plush to try I've never tried this yarn um, I like I think I said in a recent video I am a burn that yarn girly through and through so going with something different never really feels right but if it's on sale I'll try it so they have this purple color in the color orchid really pretty mm. I was gonna say mauve this is not mauve maybe like a magenta e color um, this was on sale for $5.97 so I figured I would try it see if I like it they definitely have some colors in this that I like it's just a matter of if I like the feel of it while I'm working with it um, if it pulls apart like that other one, this one that I'm about to start a merfrog with, the Sweet Snuggles, that's what it's called. If it pulls apart like Sweet Snuggles, I will not be buying it again. But to try out, to see how it goes, I'm willing to try anything once. And I do like a lot of the colors they have. So I'm hoping I like it because I'd like to mix things up a little bit occasionally do some new colors new patterns new whatever um, and I think the price point of this is a little bit less that being said let's compare 
how much you get in this. So, okay, you get in the Big Twist plush 153 yards. And I don't know what the original price on this is. In the Burnett Blanket yarn, you get 220 yards. So just under 100 more yards in Burnett Blanket standard than in the Big Twist. Um, now it is pl more plush, but that's the wrong thing. It's more plush, but that's not to say that it's going to stay more plush once I'm working with it. Like, you know, just like the Sweet Snuggles, it's more plush when you're looking at it, like comparing the strands. But once you're working with it, it kind of flattens out. Um, so I use an eight millimeter crochet hook for all three of these, or I will use that with this too. So we'll just have to see how I like it. I don't really know what I want to make yet. I'm trying to test out my like new pattern. So, oh, you know what I have a pattern for? That might be a good thing to try this purple color out on. Sorry, my camera cuts off if I'm talking too long. Um, I'm just trying to broaden my horizons with different patterns, new yarns, if I can um, and just mix it up a little bit so let me organize this bag of yarn again and then we will get into the crocheting and chatting okay we are going to start with the merfrog I decided because I know they're good sellers and um, I don't have any right now so let me find that pattern so cute I really do love the merfrog and they're really they don't really take a ton of time to crochet obviously they're pretty big they take some time I mean mine end up big big because well, especially with the um, sweet snuggles they end up bigger than than with the burnout all right I'm gonna start with the tail and just chat so I um had if you watched my weekend long craft fair video you would have seen it was the saturday show was really good and the sunday show was not good at all um and that was sad because i really wanted it to be good um it was my second year doing it but they just did not have it together unfortunately so I I don't know like I think I said in that video they offered a discounted price see this is exactly why I don't like this yarn look it's pulling apart here can you see it's made like a string where I'm t trying to tighten the magic circle I hate that I hate that so much look at this it's totally mangled Ugh so infuriating like just stay together just do your job and stay together and I have to make like a really long tail and try it again see if it'll stay together this time um or I have to crochet looser which is doable but like not ideal when you're gonna be stuffing things all right so yeah that was unfortunate um, and then this past weekend's event was pretty far away. It was. It was like an hour and a half. Ugh, it's doing it again, guys. I can't. I can't do this merfrog right now. That is really infuriating. This is why I will not be buying Sweet Snuggle yarn again. I will be using what I already have, but I will not be buying this again. It's not good for magic circles at all. I might just need to do like crocheting into the chain stitch, but I'm not going to, I'm not focusing on that right now. 
I've changed my mind. I've changed my mind. I can't. You're you're being annoying. Let's go back to the um, blooming Olivia. I'm gonna start with that. Oh no, you want me to start with the legs? Green. All right, let me get my green. I'll come back and we'll start blooming Olivia. Is that what it's called? Yes, blooming Olivia. Okay. Got the green. Um. I forgot what we were talking about, other than the fact that I won't be using Sweet Snuggles until I've calmed down. Um, oh, craft fairs. Okay, so, yeah, it was far. I only profited 30 bucks, so, I don't know, man. I've got to get a little bit better at picking what events I do. Because I've seen people be like, you should be making 10 times what it costs you to be there. That's a lot. Like, so I'm thinking maybe like I try to make five times what it costs me to be there. Because, like, I don't know. 10 times some of these events, like, I will be doing the um, Hudson Valley Wine and Food Festival in September, I think it's late September, mid-September. That costs me $400 to be there. So by the 10 times logic, I should be bringing in $4,000 in sales. Like I've not come near that ever, 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 ever. So, I don't know, to me, that's too much to say across the board. Like, yes, that'd be ideal, but I think that everyone has to kind of go in the, with their own market, like knowing your community, get an idea of the people that you're serving and make that scale like your like is it worth it scale based on what you know about the communities that you're going into because to me saying I should be making 10 times what it cost me to be there across the board like that's not happening I mean I this is my third summer of craft fairs um I've definitely grown along the way I'm still redoing my display like I'll, all the time I'm looking for things to add things to upgrade whatever so am I making more than when I started yeah definitely but I'm also spending more to be at certain craft fairs than when I started because I'm going off of their um, reputation more and usually the ones with the best reputation cost you more to be there so I would be surprised if I made 10 times what most of these events cost me to be there that being said five times like I said five times what it cost me to be there I feel like I could do so I may make that my goal for my next few events coming up and kind of base them on that and say okay if I'm not even near that I can't do this again um, or if I'm just over that or whatever, um, just for my community where I typically do my markets, that makes more sense to me. That seems more feasible to me. So I don't know. We'll see. Cause even like, th like if it costs you $30 to be there, I mean, could I bring 300 in? Maybe. Again, it depends on that environment and where it is because some people who decide they're going to host craft fairs don't take in they're not really aware of like how
how that's going to go over in the community. Will people come out for it? Have you promoted it to the best of your ability? Things like that. I mean, I've done, I've now hosted two craft fairs. I've got positive feedback from pretty much everyone who was there. One person had an issue one time, but I felt like that was outside of what was actually happening at the event and it was more like a personal thing going on. Um, so I've considered my events so far successes. I've had people say that they want to come back. People want to come back to shop. People want to come back to vend. So I'm happy about that. I haven't had to go around and say, I'm so sorry. I know it's slow. And like, you know, it's hard, but also it is, it can be frustrating when some people who choose to run events, like, aren't, don't seem aware of like what's going on and don't take certain things into consideration, um, and just seem really out of touch. Like my first event of this season, I was... It was like a Valentine's Day event and um, I was like in a completely different back room me and two other people and it was just the three of us and most of the vendors were in this large room that they could walk around in a circle in and then it was just three of us in this little back room and people would peek their head in and not come in and not like see us at all and it was really frustrating I didn't understand why they even bothered having people there but they also from in my case had booked three other crochet vendors and I was the fourth one and so she said oh well I'll have you be over here so that it's not so many in the same room and things like that like that's that would be have been fine if there were two larger rooms for shopping in but to stick three vendors into a smallish space and like not it not be like a place that people are gonna walk through anyway to get to something else no one came in I had one singular sale that day it was so discouraging it was my first event of the year and I was not thrilled um, I yeah probably won't be doing an event there again just because that felt really inconsiderate for whoever got put back there like no one wants to be off the beaten path no one wants to be like in a back room when you're trying to show your items or promote your items and the fact that there were three other crochet vendors is not my problem right like that's not my issue that you allowed in three other crochet vendors like I think that in that in, if you're were willing to have four crochet vendors maybe doing similar stuff like then you need to put us all in the same space and give us all the equal opportunity not stick somebody in a back room otherwise don't don't accept that many of the same type of person that's it I don't there's not really like much else to say on it but that you can't just suddenly decide that that was too much and, and cause somebody to suffer like that so that was frustrating um, all around and I felt so bad for Evan because I was totally totally discouraged by that I was like I will literally quit right now and he was like it's okay like this is your first event of the year you end up the year on such a strong note like don't this can't be what like ends this for you and I was like you're right and then I got a vegan milkshake and then I felt way better <laughs> but just I'm trying to be a bit more picky with things because I tend to not be picky and then I'm the one who suffers especially like mentally when it comes to my self-worth and imposter syndrome 
So my goal for the rest of this year is to be picky and do the things that yes, maybe cost a bit more money, but have a reason to cost a bit more money, have a reputation. People like things I've heard, I've heard people talk about, oh, I went here, it was so fun, we planned to go again, it was such a good experience, we shopped so much, blah, blah, blah. Then I'm gonna go look and try to be at that event. So that's my goal to do more well-known events, less, not no-name events, but like less under-promoted, not super popular events. That's my goal. And I'm sorry for the rant, because that was a total rant about that other um, event that I did. But it's on me, you know, it's not anyone else doing this. It's not like I work for a bigger company that's like, you need to be here, and I sit there all day bored. Um, and bright side of everything, right? I made friends at that event. I made friends, I invited them to my craft fair in the spring. We've stayed in touch. One of them I'm in a book club with, like, it's fine. There's always a plus side to doing these things. I got my name out there a little bit more. Now I know I don't want to do that event again, but I also made two friends. So, you know, it's just what you do when you're starting out. I mean, I've met somebody this past weekend who has been doing events for 10 years not super consistently she was telling me it is her side hobby just like it's my side hobby um but i mean i don't i think she had a couple of sales at this last event but i she said she did not make back her booth fee which it was not very high to begin with so like that is discouraging but she like she said You've got some good years, you've got some not so good years, you know, it all sort of equals out in the end, but I also do want to be learning from my mistakes, from things I commit to that were not worth my time, that were not worth my effort and energy, um, because it's good, it's good to learn, you know? So I don't know if anyone who watches does any vending, but... If you do, please let me know that I'm not alone out here <laughs> with this because I'm sure I'm not. I would be the hard pressed to believe that no one else struggles with this. I've met people who have, but you really get imposter syndrome sometimes when like no one shops or it's an hour's gone by without a sale or whatever the case may be. So obviously I want to avoid that, but. <laughs> You know it's not always avoidable something sometimes that happens but i am trying to just do i don't know more make more informed decisions about the events that i do okay let's change topics this is a really fun pattern already because i'm basically just doing this same single crochet round for the next 11 rows so that's fun um oh one thing I've been making are these little rings this one's in um out of peridot stone um but I tend to have a lot of beads left over after I do bracelets because I do gemstone bracelets if you're not if you've never like seen my stand and you've never visited my Etsy shop, I do gemstone bracelets um, and I tend to have a lot of beads left over if they can't make a full bracelet and for some of them that's partly why I started the bookmarks as well as I love bookmarks and sometimes if you read a lot of like dark romance or murder thrillers and stuff, sometimes you just feel like you need a little protection. So especially the obsidian ones, I was like, yeah, I just need a little, a little extra protection while I'm reading. So um, I've been using leftover beads for the bookmarks as well, but for these little round beads, like especially the peridot ones, because I loved the peridot bracelets sold pretty quickly. I think I've got one left. Um, 
but I just thought little rings would be so cute and so light. I honestly forget I have it on during the day. It really doesn't bother me personally on the sides. Um, and it is on a little elastic band, so it's kind of stretchy if you need it to be, but I don't recommend stretching it. I just roll it on my finger. Um, but yeah, it's so cute. I've been loving it. Um, I've been wearing it all week. I made three different sizes just because I know I've got bigger fingers. People, People's finger size vary. Um, these ones I didn't really make geared towards kids. Um, I might ask my friend if I can measure her kid's finger just to kind of get an idea of if I was going to make some smaller ones, how small would they need to be for kids' hands, or like are these three sizes kind of covering most of the bases, you know? Because um, I also don't want to really encourage too small of children to use them because these rings could definitely be a choking hazard. Um, not only because of the small beads, because they themselves are small. Um, the bracelets do have the small beads as well, but it would be much harder to swallow a whole bracelet rather than like a ring, a little ring like this. So speaking from experience, I did swallow a nickel when I was 18 months. So, you know, stuff happens. Better safe than sorry. Oh, I'm also loving that this green is matching my sweater right now. This sweater is from the Parks Project. They had a sample sale online with 260 sample and I I didn't go super crazy, but I did buy three things and I love it. I love it so much. This especially, I'm loving. This coming Saturday, <laughs> excuse me, this coming Saturday is gonna be my first time backpacking friends I'm so excited I'm considering filming but I'm also just trying to get a grasp on the idea of doing it so I might not film I don't know TBD my camera overheated sorry but I'm almost done with this I love the little they're not little they're pretty long legs but I think it's so just I think I love it because it reminds me of like a flower vine and it just makes me feel like those Alice in Wonderland flowers come to life. So I'm loving this pattern. Um, I'm also so glad I have this dark green because I thought I was going to have to use this teal blue green color um, and I totally forgot that I have this so this is much better. I'm also like running through my head kind of a list of things that I should prep before my next market. I don't have another market until the end of August um, because I'm going to be away early August and this, is, this coming weekend is the last weekend of July and I wanted to just enjoy it a little bit and do things like this backpacking trip that I've been meaning to do for really the last three years and never have done it. Um, I, people just keep gifting me things to use for backpacking, but I've never actually gone backpacking. So I'm really excited for this trip. I'm a little I'm not really nervous I mean we're going locally like I will be I don't know at most a half hour from home not even a half hour like 20 minutes from home um, we should have still cell service when we're, we're going three miles three point I think it was like three point seven miles three point six four or five miles I don't know and um, like I'm familiar with the area anyway I've already hiked that area um, sort of not as far as I'll be going but I've hiked like we're starting near a lake I've hiked around that lake already so I'm familiar with the area um, and I'm still staying relatively close to home this is really just to be able to like kind of test out my gear make sure that it works sort of 
experience backpacking for the first time before doing something like multiple hours away where you need one of those little GPS signal things because there's absolutely no cell service and you have to like figure out where to camp like we're gonna be on the Appalachian Trail and we're gonna be camping at one of the shelters um, we're just taking we're just parking like near a trailhead for it basically so it's not anything too complex I just want to like try it out and just see how it goes and what better way to start than close to home I mean we've got some beautiful trails here the Appalachian Trail goes basically a town up from where I live um, it goes um, from across the Hudson River it's so cute I really love it I want to do some on the other side of the Hudson because it goes through the state park that I really like and I would definitely love to like camp backpack through there but this will be my first time not camping I've camped but like I've never packed in stuff usually we like drive to a campground park unload the car set up the tent like do that sort of a thing like my my godmother always ends up sleeping in the car because she doesn't like to sleep on the ground um but with this there is no car backup I mean there is if we need to if we need to hike out we could I've got headlamps I've got flashlights I've got extra things like that um Evan got me a Kula cloth for my birthday um the only thing I don't have the bear canister is coming today and I don't have like a poop trowel so I might just not <laughs> poop <laughs> because I don't know the first time like that's a little that's a lot scary scary um so we'll see how that goes this is my last round before I need to read the direction for the next step. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd love to become a backpacking channel, but like, let me not get ahead of myself. I feel like I tend to do that a lot. Oh, but I was thinking about bringing this with me. Um, it's supposed to be pretty warm though on Saturday. Today it started out rainy, it ended up getting sunny. On Saturday it's supposed to be sunny all day. I think the high is like 84, 85. So I'm probably not gonna wanna wear anything too hot, um, especially to actually hike up in. But I might want to wear or bring some layers. Um, I'm feeling like that is a good way to go especially for the evening I it just it's not been getting that cold though like it's been staying in the 70s overnight so even for that I might not want something too heavy because I will have my down sleeping bag and I don't know maybe I'll just like sleep in leggings or something I don't really know still deciding still figuring things out I've got my Tevas as my camp shoes I've I'm I've got a bunch of socks, I've got my um, hiking shoes. One thing I need to test out before we go is the stove system because I've never used it before and I'm a little nervous with using the little tank. They're so cute though. But um, I'm going to try to test that out maybe tomorrow night um, so that I know how to use it and I know what I'm doing because that's a little anxiety inducing for me um so I don't know do any of you backpack I'm curious I'm always curious to learn about people and their hobbies what they do and what they like and who they are um I also have a back um uh, not backpacking but a height a uh, camping trip planned for the end of September, the last weekend of September with the Body Liberation Outdoor Club and that will be fun. I have been to the campground we're going to before but not since I was like I think 12 so it'll be nice 
to re-experience that as an adult and also meet other adults who like camping and hiking and just getting out in nature. I'm listening to this book right now for my Montessori training about like the author calls it nature deficit disorder um, and just about like the shift of children playing in nature to not playing in nature and how it's not exactly only on the children um, but also like society like there's not a lot of green spaces anymore if you live in um, a community with an HOA there may be restrictions on where children can play if they're able to build tree houses or not if they're able to build little ramps for their bikes and things like you know it's not allowed um, in a lot of places and ways for them to be children um, in the same way that I know my mom and her generation brought up of the well when I was a kid we would go out in the morning and we wouldn't come back until dinner time and it was that was feasible for them but it's not in this day and age and so what can we do instead for children to still get that outdoor experience without it necessarily being a structured sports experience either because you want them to have free play outside so it's giving me a lot of good ideas for um even for our like we have like a natural playscape at school but it's missing some elements i feel um so the, it's kind of giving me some inspiration of things we could add this year um, and things that I want to make sure to address with my parents this school year about what we might be doing throughout the year, things I recommend for at home um, throughout the school year, and it's just stuff like that. So I am really enjoying that book. I do need to be done with it by tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> For my training which I'm not done done I'm listening to it on audio so that's helpful um, and I do listen on 1.5 speed so I'm a pretty fast listener I'm going through it pretty quickly I started it yesterday I'm almost halfway through so I think that I'll be fine um, I've, like I said I've already got a lot of good ideas about it so I'm excited to present my findings to my teacher friends yeah, I feel like I spent a lot of time outside as a kid. We had a good size property and I really liked, especially in the summers and warm, when it was warm nights, being barefoot and going out to the pond or going into the woods and just making up games in my head about fairies and trolls and princes and whatever else I could think of at the time um, my cousin and I spent a solid amount of time constructing a tree house in my yard or well my uncle built the original and then we decided that it needed an addition and I wanted it to be a good school for my cabbage patch kids and I wanted a door for privacy and I wanted it to have a pulley system basket so that we could you know send things up without having um, it in our hands for climbing the ladder safely so I we did a lot we did a lot I also loved fishing um, I loved being outside you know in nature I loved animals so anything where I could go find animals like catching frogs I did all summer long catching butterflies did it finding turtles did it like I loved that stuff catching snakes oh the best so I sort of relate and sort of don't relate to like children now because I'm considered like uh, uh, on the cusp of Gen Z and Millennial I think they call us Zillennials or something um, it's like 1996 97 98 99 
so we had that childhood of still going outside but then at the same time we grew up with technology grew up using the internet to do things for homework grew up with cell phones um so we had a kind of blended childhood between the two generations i think it's really interesting to reflect on in that way then again i was also a crochet girly so anytime that i could be at home crocheting i would but i've also brought my crochet out with me on the bike around the neighborhood and anytime we stopped i was working on a scarf <laughs> so that's fun too oh speaking of scarves i have been itching to make snoods i bought the most beautiful anniversary cake one of those karen anniversary cakes i have no idea what the colorway is called but it's got speckles of all sorts of colors i can make three snoods out of one cake and i i'm desperate desperate to start making snoods but at the same time working with that yarn makes me so hot so i need ac blasting i would need the fan on so that's why it's not my project right now because this thing is massive if you've never seen one of the anniversary cakes they are huge they're at least three times the size of my head it's gigantic but it's so beautiful and so fun to work with i don't know if i've shown the snoods on youtube yet um i didn't really promote them last year i didn't really get the chance to promote them last year i sold out pretty quickly so they didn't even make it to etsy last year that being said i love making them i've already i do have a couple left over actually from the very last craft fair of the season and oh i had a couple orders over the winter from people i knew and um for those orders i needed the anniversary cake anyway so they just picked one out of the three choices available so i will probably try to photograph those relatively soon um while it's still like nice out and i can take pictures outside with them um and then have them make sure they're available through the fall uh, and the winter what was my price on them i think it was like 25 bucks that wasn't bad um yeah that wasn't bad at all because they're really great like i genuinely wore actually there's definitely pictures on my instagram of my snood but i wore my snood all the time i mean it basically looks like a huge circle scarf but it's wide enough that you can pull it over your up your head like a hood um while still having it wrapped around your neck so it's still keeping you warm here but then you can pull it up like a hood and kind of keep your ears a bit more warm protect your face or if it starts snowing i just think they're so cute i love it i love it so much i i i i mean i didn't i just kind of wung it when i made them and so now i have a pattern in my head but i've never written it down i really should write it down just so that i know what it is but um they're just easy they just work up quick i'm pretty sure i do a double crochet i should look at my other ones that i have made so i know for sure if it's a double crochet. um but because of that they work up really quick and i use a 10 millimeter crochet hook and you would think that that would make it like gappy and loopy and let a breeze come through but it really does not it's really warm and it is acrylic yarn so that as well helps to keep heat in um I mean wool would also do that but it does that without being itchy either it sheds a small amount of fibers though i will say that there would be some times um when i would shed some fibers and i would have it like stuck in my chapstick throughout the winter so that's a little really it's not even that annoying because it wasn't a ton but i do remember that happening a little bit but that will probably happen with most scarves you wear anyway, especially if they are handmade out of yarn, regardless of if it's wool or acrylic or whatever. So just kind of something to note. But yeah, I think that my next chit chat crochet with me might need to be that because I see it on my shelf and I don't know if I can wait any longer to make them because I love them. 
I love, I love the snoods. They're so much fun. So much fun to make, kind of mindless, and beautiful, and, and effective, useful. Not just for hugging. This is useful too, in its own way, but I mean, if, if it keeps getting any warmer in the winter, they're not gonna be that effective, but for now, they're still effective. I've also used them on rainy days when it was slightly rainy instead of snowy late fall. Still very useful. So, I will still recommend them, even if it's not cold. Not that cold. All right. I know I didn't get that far in the crochet portion of today, but I'm starting to get really hungry. So, I think think I might put a pause on this or end this video here and go eat something because I'm really hungry um but you guys seem to like the chit chat crochet with me so I kind of want to make those a bit more consistent maybe every third video be a chit chat crochet with me instead of just like once a month or something like that if I am posting four times a month um think that would be a little nice thing so I'm gonna finish up this leg and put in some pizza that I had gotten on Monday because I'm really hungry and I'm a little tired because I'm running the summer program where I work and we don't have a lot of kids, but when it's rainy, like today was a really rainy day. It was just, usually we, we will still go outside in the rain, but, and we did go outside this morning, but it was kind of miserable. Like, it was, just was not, it wasn't an enjoyable rain. It was drizzling, but it was humid, but then if the breeze picked up, it, I was getting cold. I was, it was just kind of all over the place and then the rain started getting heavier and then we were like all right let's just go in so we only spent like I don't know 30 minutes outside in the morning which is fine but not not as fun I mean you want summer fun so then we were inside they hadn't really gotten out a lot of their energy and it was just a lot it's a lot when kids don't get out their energy they need to be outside so we did we took out the tumbling mats um they got to get in some movement we had music going we were dancing together and then this afternoon um we kind of had a chill beginning of the afternoon and then it cleared up and the sun came out and we ended the day outside we dismissed from outside because it was so nice so i was glad to get back outside at the end of the day but having them be cooped up this morning was not it, not it All right, last round and then we are signing off. So please tell me what other videos you wanna see. I'm just kind of just going with the flow right now, whatever happens to come up in my life. I'm just trying to film that. Um, but like if you're like, yeah, we really like Chit Chat Crochet With Me videos, like make that a priority. I will absolutely make this a priority. Especially if you don't mind it being a bit longer and just word vomity. That's great for me because I can talk. So if that works for you, that works for me. And let's make that a plan. Make it a date. And let's just keep doing that for like consistently that'll be fun um I definitely plan to film another one of these to check crochet with me's while I'm down in Florida for my little vacay and then maybe I'll try to film another one while I'm in California for a second little vacay um but we'll see we're just gonna go with the flow see what happens I don't know um we'll just have to see how much yarn I bring wherever I go because we're not flying down to Florida we're driving but we are flying to California so I might have a good amount of yarn with me to Florida, but California might be more difficult to pack for. So 
we'll just see what the vibes are i hope you guys enjoyed this video and please stick around for the next one if you liked it give me a thumbs up just so i know i mean whatevs you can also comment that's cool too and i'll catch you in the next one bye